After our last special video about catastrophe evidence and the galactic trigger at the two closest stars to our system in the direction of the galactic center, there are basically two questions about the galactic current sheet. First, what is the galactic current sheet? And two, can we tell how long until it gets here based on those two closest star events? Well, the galactic current sheet and what it is and how it triggers the solar micronova is largely covered in our existing 23-part series, in the full movie, and especially in the Nova Triggers video, all of which are linked below. But perhaps a bit more is needed here, and we can use the solar system, the Sun's current sheet, to learn about the scaled-up version at the galaxy. Keep in mind that the Sun and galaxy rotate the opposite ways as we perceive north, so the curve of the galaxy goes the other way, but the further you get out, the less the curve actually seems to matter. From seeing out to Mars to seeing out to Jupiter, we can see that the bend halts at the radial motion, the rotational flow ceases, and a more concentric circle pattern is formed from the spiral. Well, galaxies are like this too, especially barred spirals like our own, where you can see the outward jut of the spiral towards the inside of the galaxy, then bend out to concentricity. And that is exactly what ends up happening once you get out into the solar system at Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, etc. While Mercury likely sees the sheet moving across it from the Sun's perspective, rotationally, the outer planets see the sheet coming right at them. This is the best existing visualization of the Sun's current sheet. In the solar system, it is mostly an ion density change and reversal of the solar wind magnetic field. But in the galaxy, the sheet contains the electrified particles and the galactic field reversal, but also the dust and gases caught in the front of the wavy sheet or attracted to it like a static duster in your home. As described in that Nova Triggers movie, it's the kind of thing that brings two separate ways to get a Nova from a star, let alone a super flare, and it brings them at the same time. And so, with the Sun at around the Saturn or Uranus-like distance from the center of the galaxy, if you can translate it that way, it means we are likely seeing the concentric waves basically emanating out from the center of the galaxy right at the Sun, a radial outflow, not rotational, one wave after another. And so let's take what we know. These are the detection dates and light year equated real flare years of the outbursts, I didn't include Barnard's in that last video, figured you could handle it, and when we remember that we are looking at stars that are 6 and 4 light years away, the 1992 to 2012 jump, an occurrence means the wave triggered stars 2 light years apart, 20 years apart, which would mean that the 4 light years between Proxima Centauri and our star would be eclipsed in 40 years from 2012, or it would occur in around 2052. Nice and easy, right? Well, if you simplify the situation, yes, it is that easy. But here's why it might not be so easy in reality. This graphic we show to the nearest stars is not exactly at scale, but pretend the center of the galaxy is way, way, way off the screen to the top, and indeed, Centauri is slightly off our view to the right and Barnard is slightly off our view to the left. If they were in a perfect line straight ahead, you could use that 6 and 4 light years, but this is a bit more trigonometry, and that's problem number 1. Problem number 2, no matter how far out you get in the spiral, it is never going to be perfectly concentric. The spirals do keep going out, and that means there will be a slight bend, if not the slightest of rotational flavors still lingering on the tongue of that sheet or wave. It is truly a shame that the only good animation of this galactic sheet field traces using the opposite spiral motion of the Milky Way. The correct one is at the bottom left. And so just pretend that those lines going out bend the other way, and indeed probably have to pretend they bend a lot more, like the sun's field. And this wasn't exactly the focus of the animation, and so it wasn't a key detail in their design. But in essence, the wave might come down at this image right horizontally. It might be angled slightly or curved slightly, even to the point where it was getting Barnard and Proxima at the same time. Just picture the correct bend. It's certainly possible. That's problem two. We don't know the character of the sheet or super wave, or even which it is in this case. And that idea that the sheet could bend, and in theory, could have been surrounding both those nearest stars at the same time, 
drives problem number three, and it's the answer to the question of why then would there have been a 20-year difference in flaring between Barnard Star and Proxima Centauri if indeed they could have gotten hit at the same time. Well, the answer is that every star is going to be triggered differently. We briefly touched on this in the last video, but now think about it a little more. Some might just have a brightness change, some will flare, some will nova, some give off gamma rays, and something tells me that not only do each of those take different triggering times, but those times vary from star to star. It's not like we've got glowing plasma twins out there everywhere. They are, by and large, far more different than human to human, so consider that. Barnard, which had never flared before, maybe just needed a little push. The astrosphere around the flare star Proxima would indeed have taken much more to overcome. Maybe that's an explanation for its delay. And indeed, those star magnetic shields matter too. You ask how long before the sheet arrives, well, who says it isn't here already? Who says it isn't a hundred year long process going through it? Earth spends a couple hours in the sun's sheet every two weeks, so scale up a couple hours in two weeks to maybe a hundred years every 12,000 years for the galactic current sheet cycle. Doesn't really sound so crazy. Certainly less crazy than it hitting in one day and being gone. It may have been affecting both Barnard and Proxima for years before we saw anything. And now, let's add to all of those facts the fact that our changes in the solar system have already begun. And remember, Proxima was a known flare star. It's now routinely flaring 10 times higher with that one super flare being 10 times higher still. Now look at the sun over the last century compared to most of the last 12,000 years prior. Since the last great magnetic excursion of Earth, the sun has not done anything like it just did last century. Well, is that our sun's version of 10 times higher activity before it releases one 10 times higher still? And furthermore, does it matter that Barnard's star is moving perpendicular to us while Centauri moves directly away? Does a star's proper motion with, against, or sideways to the sheet make a difference in those triggering times? Are you starting to see how many moving parts are here? FYI, it has indeed been my position that the planets are changing due to the solar system-wide shift, which may be galactic after all. At this point, we are being affected already, likely in the sheet already, or taking the edge of the wave. So, it may be 2052, something my children and perhaps even I would see. But it also could be much, much sooner. That's why, without anything remotely resembling fear, we have to keep our eyes open. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.